All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming to this week's PlaceKey webinar. My name is Jack Lindsay, and I'm a PlaceKey Community Manager. For those of you unfamiliar with PlaceKey, PlaceKey is a free universal standard identifier for any physical place so that the data pertaining to those places can be shared across organizations easily. It's a movement of organizations and individuals that prize access to data. Without further ado, let's get into it. This week, we have Dr. Leila Hadayadfar and Dr. Olha Buchel. Leila Hadayadfar and Olha Buchel are postdoctoral researchers at the New England Complex Systems Institute. They are currently working on a NSF-funded project that studies the mobility networks during the pandemic and develops optimized solutions for managing breakdowns. Please join me in welcoming them. Okay. Yes. Okay, um, thanks. Uh, hello everyone and thanks for listening to our presentation. Here I would like to present a, a, an NSF granted project uh, titled Strategies in COVID-19 Lockdown Using Mobility Patterns. Uh, done by the research at the New England Complex System Institute. My name is Leila Hereyati Farb and uh, my colleague is Ol Habushal and uh, Yanir Baryan, the president of NICSI in this project. The goal of this project is to show that the state governments must collaborate with each other as the states are not necessarily disconnected from each other according to the mobility patterns. We would like to uh, create an opportunity to optimize lockdown strategies by aligning policies with the mobility, individual's mobility patterns. A combination of three factors in the spread of an infectious disease are playing an important role. Transmissibility of the pathogen responsible for the infection, incubation time period of the disease, and host heterogeneity in both population and social interaction characteristics. The third one is the, uh, the, the, the part that we try to uh, do the analysis and uh, optimize the policies based on those uh, facts. Uh, it's challenging to predict and control the, uh, an outbreak like COVID-19 due to the complexity of human interactions and movements over time, and also the heterogeneity in population density of people uh, all around the uh, United States, for instance. This, is, this presentation, we are just talking about the, we are analyzing data for the US, so I'm just talking about the US right now. In the US, the federal government defines the general policies and do the budget allocation, and the state governments are responsible for the implementing the policies. Each state government acts separately with most of the measurements and risk definitions being done by the administrative patches and borders. Special distancing and guarantee policies have been the most impactful policies on controlling the diffusion of the COVID-19. Uh, so there is a critical need to carefully define the borders of areas uh, that are connected to each other and they have different risk levels considering the location of suspected uh, cases. We need to know where the people who were in touch with the infected person were and went. To answer uh, or to find a solution or answer uh, these questions, we uh, collected mobility data and uh, do some analysis on them that uh, I will present uh, the results of the project in the following. My colleague uh, is presenting or talking about the uh, mobility data that she was responsible for that part of the project. Olga. Hello. So SafeCraft provides us with the pre-processed uh, pre anonymized mobility data extracted from uh, smartphone apps. In our project, we mainly use social distancing data set. Uh, this data set gives us an opportunity to explore the evolution of uh, mobile communities in the, uh, in the U.S. during COVID-19. Social distancing data set captures human movement in geographic space. Each person who moves in space and uses social media for communication leaves footprints in the form of geospatial coordinates. If we take many paths like this, we can analyze them and get insights about mobility patterns in the area. 
uh, to uh, anonymize mobility data and the social distancing data set, SafeGraph aggregates locations of users by census block groups. Such aggregation, such an aggregation, prevents data users to reconstruct fine details of food paths uh, left by indi uh, individual uh, individuals. Uh, the data set has information about the source, uh, uh, the uh, source location, the target location, the date, and the weight of interaction. We combine this data into weekly data frames, grouped and summed them. Next slide, uh, next slide please. Uh, this data we used for the, uh, for the construction of the, uh, of the mobility network. In the mobility network, nodes represent the census block groups, edges represent the movement of individual from one location to another location, and edge, uh, edges weights represent uh, the number of people who travel from uh, between uh, different block groups. Uh, current slide shows the degree distribution in one of our mobility networks. You can see uh, that the census block groups with the higher degrees are located in densely populated locations. Network, uh, network allows us to uh, analyze the presence of communities. Specifically, we apply the Luovine algorithm with mod uh, modularity optimization uh, for the mobility network. We run the community detection algorithm three times for each time frame. During the first round, we detect the large main, uh, large main communities. Then we select relationships within each large community and detect sub-communities. Finally, we select relationships among sub-communities, filtering out communities inside the communities and uh, detect mega-communities. Mega-communities are used for defining color hues on the maps. Typically, the number of um, uh, mega communities is not large, it's between five and six. So for each group, we are trying to assign similar color hues over time. So that sub-communities in Florida and Alabama have uh, blue shades, for example. In Midwest, uh, gray, in the Northeast, uh, purple, and uh, uh, in the South, pink, and in the West, uh, ye uh, from yellow to brown. Okay, Leila? Yes. Okay. So the I can mention that the, there are different uh, reasons for the mobility patterns. So we can, in fact, we can uh, characterize the mobility pattern based on three concepts: short distance movements that happen for grocery shopping or walking, medium distance movements that happen for travel to neighborhood cities or uh, for job or for fun, and long distance movement that travel to other cities for vacation or visiting families. A combination of these habits in a self-organized manner form the size of border of the communities. And also a combination of these ones uh, create a multi-scale uh, uh, of the um, commu communities, formation of the communities. Uh, so let me show them in the slides and then I can show you how we can fight based on these communities, how we can fight against the pandemic. In this figure, um, I showed the communities in the one uh, in the first scale with different colors, and uh, as my uh, colleague explained, mega communities are presented by uh, uh, color hues, and smaller communities, sub communities inside the communities are divided from each other by black lines. So we sh we are showing three different scales of the communities here, and uh, so you can see that. Uh, in the, we have mega communities in the west, north, uh, northeast, southeast, and east of the U.S. That over time, sometimes some, some of the communities are getting disconnected from one mega community and uh, appear in another community. But mostly the borders are uh, quite consistent in the U.S. That means that they didn't change that much. The other important uh, fact of this map is that uh, I, I, try, I showed the state uh, borders by yellow lines. You can see that in some of the areas, however, the communities are aligned with the state boundaries. In most of the areas, they strongly deviate from the state boundaries and in the next slide from the county boundaries, showing that, uh, that this, is, this is why we believe that, a state, uh, that a state governments should collaborate with each other as the mobility communities are not exactly aligned with the administrative borders. By adding the indicator of the number of cases on top of the communities, 
we can quantify the risk of the exposure by COVID-19 for the communities and uh, which areas have higher uh, number of cases. By uh, zooming into the maps, I try to explain the, the facts of these maps. They are, talking, uh, they are presenting a lot of the interesting results that I just try to sh uh, talk about some of them here. First of all, is that, uh, as you can see, when I zoom into the communities, you can see that uh, sub-communities in the city areas are getting smaller than the uh, rural area, plus, while a, a large community can show, uh, show a lot of number of uh, cases and high risk, some of the areas or some of the sub-communities inside the larger communities are showing less uh, number of cases and meaning that they are safer than the uh, other areas. This can uh, give the uh, governments the flexibility to uh, the uh, the chance to make a flexible uh, guarantee policy that uh, give the chance for the communities that they are safer and have lower case to reopen and get back to the normal life uh, earlier than the other the communities that they have higher number of cases. Plus, uh, governments should be careful about the commute of the uh, people in different uh, communities when they have different type of risk uh, of exposure. Um, the, there were some other in, some interesting uh, things about the communities. We realized different types of the communities. One of them is isolated communities. Uh, there are some communities that they are, uh, some parts of the community that they are geographically disconnected from the original community. These type of communities can be the source of the spread of the disease from one area to another area. For instance, Universities are a good example of these type of communities. Here I showed Cornell University and Sunny Cortland University that they are connected to the, uh, to the community in New York City. However, geographically they are disconnected from that area. The other example is vacation spots. This figure showed the map for April 5th to 11 that we had a lot of number of uh, COVID cases in New York City. But you can see that uh, um, vacation is what I, uh, let me, a vacation is what that uh, are that those mountains that are shown in the map, and uh, they are a uh, vacation spot for the people in New York City in that period of time, that they are disconnected from New York City, and also we have parklands uh, that they are connected to the community that is in the, the south of the New Jersey state. So you can see that how. COVID can, can spread from those areas to the other areas and from there to the neighborhood area. The other one is sub-communities within other sub-communities. We saw uh, some of the some communities that they are people in those communities prefer to mostly communicate with each other than the rest of the areas. Uh, university campuses are a good example of these type of communities. The other one is that that was very interesting is sub-communities in the city areas. Racial and income uh, differences, um, city infrastructures and transportations can be the reason of having uh, separate uh, sub-communities inside the cities that can help uh, governments to manage the spread of the disease from different locations inside the cities. Um, the, 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 the fact about the communities is that they are not really disconnected from each other. They are showing the area that people mostly move inside those communities, but they are, all, they are really, they are, in fact, there are some connections between the communities as well. So here I showed uh, one community inside the New York City and quantified the number of connections from that, com of movements from that community to other communities and from other communities to that community. So you can see that however many of the movements are happening in from the neighborhood area, neighborhood communities, but for that community we have a lot of movements to the communities in, in Florida state. Um, so showing that why we had a outbreak after an outbreak in New York, we had a lot of cases in, in Florida. 
Um, by tracking the, the, the dynamic of these communities over the weeks, we can quantify and show that how the um, uh, current lock, um, lockdown uh, or lockdown policies are working, how they con uh, co different areas are connected to each other, and how they are changing over time. Um, here I just uh, showed for six weeks uh, for the earliest stages of COVID-19 case, uh, COVID-19 in the U.S. They are for February, March, April, and May. Um, and we can make a lot of examples, very nice examples uh, about the movements, but I just try to show a very clear one here. Take a look at the, the states, uh, the communities in the Florida states. They are in the uh, February and early March, they are connected to the communities in the Northeast of the uh, US, showing that they were hot spot uh, vacation for the people in those areas. And then in March, it's getting connected to the communities in the west of the U.S. And just in April, they are getting disconnected from those areas by the lockdowns that the government put for the, uh, the travels between the areas. So that can be a, a very clear uh, sign of how lockdowns are, are working. So these are the things that we're trying to uh, study in this project. and. Uh, find where some facts from them uh, by using the data from the safe graph. So right now we are making the maps. Um, these are the, the, the first results of the work. And right now we have the map for uh, the next weeks from this, uh, this fan map, uh, uh, weeks that are showed in this uh, figure. Uh, you can find the maps in ncoronavirus.org that uh, if Olga have time, she can uh, show you the, uh, the, the website. And also I want to say that we have a team of volunteers and interested in further collaboration if anyone is interested to uh, work with us. Uh, thanks for listening. Fantastic, that was really, really good. Thank you. Um, and Olga, did you wanna show the, the map or do we wanna move? Uh, just a second, let me open the website. Okay. And for anyone viewing, if there's any questions, just feel free to put them in chat and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll ask them. Actually. So yeah. this is the main web page of our website. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and coronavirus.org. And if you go on the maps uh, into US mobility maps, you will see a brief description of um, what these communities are, how we name them, uh, how, uh, uh, um, how to access, uh, access them, how to change, how to compare them with the boundary, uh, with the counties and uh, uh, with the st uh, state borders. You also have uh, some maps that uh, sh show relationships between communities, uh, mo movements between, uh, between the communities. Uh, we, we made those uh, uh, only for uh, a, a certain, we uh, certain weeks. And we have a short paper li uh, linked to, uh, to this website. Perfect, all right. And I've personally read the paper and I thought it was really, really great. So uh, very awesome. So actually, and while we're waiting for questions to come in, I had a question that either one of you maybe could answer. Um, you mentioned how important it is that communities or local governments work together due to the overlap beyond state and, and county borders. So what is the best way to get actionable results from the research? Um, you mentioned kind of like how policies could be adjusted, but uh, how do we actually get this information to the governments? Like what's, what's the, the plan there? Um, we actually, uh, the, the, the community are showing that uh, where people are moving, where they are spending time from, where, which location they are going to, to work or uh, where they commute between the work and how they home and also the vacation at spots. So these, these things can help that if, if for instance, uh, a person, uh, his or her home is in one state and they go and travel or commute to another state for work, they, the governments between those, in those states, they should know that, that there, there are actually these movements and these states are connected to each other. So the policies they are making should be aligned with the 
with those movements for those people as well. They cannot make the policies just for their own state and ignoring these movements between the between the states. So. Okay, has there has there been any um, effort to push this towards policymakers thus far? We are um, trying to work with some of the politicians. Um, you know, we uh, had some connections with Arizona and um, uh, some other states, but you see, like you, you need all uh, all states to collaborate on this. It only works if everyone's involved, right? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, and for a, a second question, do you think that the change in community movement from February to May is more of a result of lockdown politics or fear of the virus? Because we kind of had both factors playing in. Um, February, from February to May, I think it's, uh, many of them are because of the lockdowns, because we, we had very effective lockdowns in, uh, you know, uh, universities are getting closed, schools getting closed, many of the markets, and those really help to, especially this, the universities, uh, they really change the movements of the people. And uh, I think those are where from uh, the, the lock, uh, lockdowns. And okay. yeah. Also, the change in MAGA communities, I think it can be explained because many p people uh, commute from uh, uh, like uh, upstate New York to uh, work in, uh, um, in New York City or from, Michi from Michigan to New York or from Michigan to, uh, to, uh, New, to New England. So you can definitely see, see this connection. Uh, apparently, people were coming back home. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. And you guys also mentioned um, kind of that this is just the beginning. So where does, what does the future of this research look like? What is your, your team going towards and what do you see as like the, the, the end result of, well, obviously the end result is action, right? But uh, where do you see this going in the next few months? Uh, the continue of this work is right now we are in the middle of developing a model based on the, the, these mobility patterns. We try to model the spread of the disease based on the, uh, the mo mobility communities of people. And uh, that's exactly showing that which areas are connected to each other. And uh, the other one is that uh, we are trying to add more demographic characteristic of the uh, areas to our map, showing that uh, how much vulnerable people have been suffered from this uh, uh, coronavirus. and. Um, how, how uh, these policies change the mobility patterns for different uh, types of people in the US and how much it was suffering for different types of people in the US. That's why we are trying, in the next step, we are working on that. Also, Amazing. it is possible to define common communities, uh, communities that are more stable and communities that are changing over time. So yeah. we want uh, to define where uh, like, uh, there is a stabil uh, so, sort of econom economic stability and which ones uh, are uh, pro uh, prone to change. That's very interesting. All right. So that'll be interesting to, to see in the future. Um, so if anyone has any questions uh, about any of this research that you've presented thus far. Um, one, would it be okay if they reached out to you in the, the PlaySki community? And two, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you? Uh, uh, I put my email in this presentation. Our emails are in this presentation, so you can reach us in, uh, in our, by our email. And also I put uh, our uh, Slack channel for ncoronavirus.org, so you can uh, reach us in that uh, channel as well. Perfect. And uh, Olga, the same for you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, right. But I'm also connected on Slack on uh, uh, play, uh, place key. Uh, mm -hmm. The only problem is that I don't uh, check it too often, so I might miss okay. something. But I do see when uh, my, my, my name is mentioned. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, all right, Corey, I believe I will turn it back over to you and you can let us know what's next. Yeah, so um, if anybody has any further questions, you can always ask them in the research and results Slack channel that we have. Um, and then this video will be posted to our PlaceKey YouTube later on today and on our website.
So that's it. Uh, thanks to everybody for participating. Thank you, Jack, for hosting. And everybody have a great afternoon. Thank you. Take Bye. care, everybody. Thank you for inviting. Sure. Bye. Thank you for presenting.